Before we start the tutorial, I wanted to inform you that I stream five days a week playing simulation games, mainly farming sim, uh, over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash sloth farms. Come check it out, come chill out. I'm happy to answer any questions. I also have a Discord, you can find that down below. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to inform you of. I hope to see you there. Welcome along to the first in a series where we're going to be looking at the Proceed mod made by Wopster for FS19. The main function of this mod is to allow you to add tram lines when you are seeding. It also has many other possibilities, such as turning the fertilizer feature on and off for a seeder, the half shut off, and the sound when the seeder is active. And all of these features will be covered in this series. In the first episode, we are going to be covering the basics using the Proceed user interface and the different modes which come along with it. Sit back and enjoy. <laughs> Quickly pausing it here before it moves on, I completely forgot to say at the start, to get the mouse to come up to interact with the Proceed user interface, it's press down the scroll wheel, and it will show you the cursor, and then you can interact with it. But let's continue on with the tutorial. Alright everybody, welcome to the first part of the first episode. We're going to be going through the user interface. Now, all I've done is I've got a tractor here, and I've put a cedar on the back of it, and it's at the field. You'll see that there's GPS is not active being uh, spammed here in the center. And that'll be because of this mode, but we'll get into that in a minute for now. And what I recommend you do is you just change it off of that so that that will stop coming off. But we're gonna go through each stage of this. This is completely default. I've done absolutely nothing to this as far as I'm aware. So starting from the top up here, I'll hopefully zoom in for you guys. But you can see here we got the seed usage in liters how many hectares you've seeded, and I believe this is some sort of a efficiency, how many uh, hectares you're doing per in-game hour, and then you've got this little reset button here to reset this, if you want to reset it after every, you know, season's year, or or every field, or whenever you want to reset it. There's this little button here, which ret retracts it, if you don't want it to take up the whole screen. Next, you've got the mode. Now, we'll go through each of the modes in the part two, but you've got manual, semi, semi, and auto which you can change through, as I said, I'll leave it on that. Here we've got the distance. Now, this is the distance of your sprayer. So, for me, over there, I've got an 18-meter sprayer, which we would be using for this, so I've set this to 18. This isn't the width of the cedar. This is how big your sprayer will be. So you can change it. In manual mode, you can't change it, because manual mode, it doesn't matter. Here, you've got track numbers as well. So if I set it to 18, we've got three tracks, because it's a 6-meter cedar. So 6... 12, 18, and it means in the middle track, you'll see that the tram lines come on. We'll move on to that in a minute, but I'll leave it like that. Over here, this button here, if it's a cedar which also does fertilizer, this is turning it on and off. At default, it's off. So you've got to make sure to turn that on if you want to be putting fertilizer in with the cedar. Next here, in this middle bit, we've got the, the cedar width. I know this cedar is 6 meters, so this is accurate. 6 meters, perfect. This one here is the half shut-off mode. So if we just move it to track 3, turn it on, it shuts off that half. Click it again, shuts off the other half. Click it again, all of it's back on. Perfect. This one here is your mode for tram lines to be cultivated. Which basically means, instead of it just not seeding it, it will make it very visual where you can see where the tram lines are by leaving a cultivated mark. You can turn that on and off. I usually leave it on. I prefer what it looks like. Here in this middle bit, as I said, is the actual seeder. So it will show when um, the little tram lines are turned off or when the half of it's shut off. And then the final part is this sound. This is the active sound. Now, I've got it turned on. Let me turn on the cedar. So let me start the engine. If I turn on the cedar, you'll start to hear a beep. That beep is telling me that the cedar is active and it's lifted up. If I turn that off, that beep is now gone. I hope you can hear the difference. There we go. That is a UI. To get into the UI, you just press your middle mouse button. You can drag it around. You can, as I said, minimize it. And yeah, that's what each of the buttons do. I will put a diagram up on the screen now, which you can see, and I'll link uh, Wops's GitHub readme down below, because that's useful, and I've got quite a bit of my information for this video from there to make sure it's official and actually how it's used. 
Sometimes when you start a save game back up, this will have disappeared. If that happens, I will show this in a later video, but you pretty much go to the save game. You'll see an XML called proceed.xml. Just delete it, come back in, and it will be reset to the default position. I usually have that issue if I put it over here. For some reason, it always gets rid of it, so from now on, I like to keep it over here to make sure it doesn't disappear. But I hope this part helps. Now let's move on to the modes. We have now covered the user interface, we're going to move on to the modes, of which there are three different types, which means three different ways of being able to put tram lines in. We'll start with the manual mode. In the manual mode, it allows the user to have full control of when they want to put the tram lines in, meaning you do not need to put a sprayer width in, and you will not need to move and mess around with the track numbers. You use the keybind left control and R to toggle on and off the tram lines, which means this way you're going to have to pick when you want them. This would be useful for when you're doing the headlands, um, but otherwise I would recommend the other modes. The second mode we have is the semi mode. This is when the user has slight control over it, but it isn't fully automated. So you will put the sprayer width in, you'll have uh, the track numbers, and every time the cedar is lowered, that track number is incremented by one. So if the track was set to one, you lower the cedar, the track number has been turned over to track number two. This is useful for when you're doing your up and downs after your headlands, um, and you haven't got GPS, or even if you have got GPS, but if you have got GPS, I'd recommend the next mode, which is automatic. For this mode, you require the Guidance Steering mod, another mod made by Wopster. It's a great mod. Um, we're going to make tutorials on that at some other point, but at the moment, if you know how to use GPS, use the Auto mode. If you don't, don't worry about this part. All you have to do with this mode, again, is set the sprayer width, and it will automatically, once you've got your GPS set up with the track, it will automatically know where what track number you're on which means if you want to do skip rows, you can, it will work perfectly fine. Again, we're going to show these off in game, but this is the basic understanding of how they work. All right, people, I hope this tutorial has helped. I hope you've got a further understanding of how the user interface works and how the different modes do. We are going to have future tutorials, which will have a dedicated video per uh, mode. And from that, obviously, you can actually understand how it works in game. I just wanted to give a clear um, simple understanding and I hope that's how it came across all of the mods are down below also the discord and my twitch where you can come and ask questions uh, ask me anything else if I've got something wrong let me know you can also use the comments uh, to tell me any criticism this is my first real tutorial and I'm obviously doing this after editing it I think it went pretty good uh, there's some bits which could have gone better but at least I know for next time uh, the next tutorial as I said will cover tracks and from there we'll move on to the different modes and I'll catch you then. Make sure you like and do all that stuff that everyone says on YouTube these days. I'm not a YouTuber, I don't know. Whatever. I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.